The car repo crisis is getting even worse. This comes from Ally Financial's CEO Pops. Over the course of the quarter, our credit challenges have intensified. Our borrowers struggling with high inflation and cost of living, and now more recently, a weakening employment picture. This comes on the heels of Ally reporting worse than expected financial results, and in particular, Dad, their auto loan delinquencies and repossessions going through the roof. We've got an auto loan repocalypse happening right now, Pops. Let's break it down for everyone. I was going to say repo McGill. But what the heck do I know? Um, yeah, it seems like the burden of high car payments, high interest rates, uh, negative equity, um, job losses, all coming to rear its ugly head at the same time. And it is severely starting to impact many of the lenders in the auto sector. So we have data from a few places that we can look at. Let's start with repos, Dad. Mannheim puts out a quarterly report. Mannheim is the world's largest auto auction for car dealers, and they do what they call check-in reports. Reports. What percentage of vehicles that are coming through the wholesale auctions are repo vehicles, fleet vehicles, etc.? That the repo check in rate. It is up at 114%. That means that there are more vehicles coming through the wholesale dealer auctions that are repossessed vehicles right now than there were before the pandemic. So the first indicator we can look at here, and it was as low as 71% just a few years ago, the first indicator we can look at here is, well, car repos are up. And we know, we've documented it on this channel and over on the Car Edge Live channel, there's actually a repo shortage. Like there's not enough repo drivers and repo trucks to pick up all the vehicles that are out there. And I think you can talk about from your experience, repo vehicles at the dealer auctions, not necessarily the nicest stuff. Well, repos tend to be vehicles that people, if they couldn't afford to make the payments, OK, they certainly couldn't afford to maintain the cars. And if they realized that the vehicle was going to end up being repossessed because they weren't making the payments, they sure as hell definitely weren't doing any, any of the maintenance that was required to see. Um, repo check-ins at 114% of where they had, that is that is crazy. And we know, as you mentioned, there is a shortage of repossession agents out there. So it's difficult for these lending institutions to find the repo personnel to actually go pick up the cars. If they could pick up as many cars as they needed, that number at 114 would probably be closer to 125%. It absolutely would. And then the precursor to a repossessed vehicle is auto loan delinquency. The chart that you're seeing on your screen, Dad, this breaks down auto loan delinquency, 90 days plus being late on your auto loan payment by age group. And look what's happening, Dad. The uh, auto loan delinquency crisis, the repocalypse, it's happening specifically or most acutely with younger borrowers. Look at the 18 to 29 year old category, Dad. They are the most severely impacted by I don't know, choosing to not pay their auto loans. Then it's the 30 to 39 year olds. And then you've got the 40 to 49 year olds. So it's skewing younger. Do you think this has anything to do, dad, with during the pandemic, the fact that, you know, consumers, especially younger consumers in flex culture, flex on them pops, in flex culture, they were trying to get as nice a vehicle as they possibly could. And the banks were writing these auto loans at 140, 150, 160%. And now those kids, yeah, I'm gonna call them kids, are making the decision to, I don't know, they just can't afford it anymore. Like, to me, there's a, an obvious correlation here for what happened. I, I I see a correlation there. I don't think it's quite as obvious as you seem to think it is. What I realized from having spent 43 years in retail automotive is that the younger people don't have a particularly good idea as to how financing works, okay? Um, many of them don't have a, a thick credit file. So if, if you're a first time buyer or perhaps a second time buyer and, and your first car loan was $5,000 and now you're looking for $45,000, well, you're going to be charged higher rates because they don't have a background of uh, or a history for the lender to look at and go, yeah, let's lend this person some money at, at the best possible rates. So I, I think there's a there's an educational piece where the people just don't know the Customers just don't know. And then, yes, part of it was that flex mentality of, well, hey, even though I'm only 19, I deserve to have the best, damn it. And that's what I'm going to get. The mentality around car payments and younger people, and then financing things for 60, 72, 84, 96 months, 
bad, bad mix. And we're obviously starting to see that in some of these financial results. And it's not just auto loans that I want to kind of wave the broader macro flag here. Transition into serious delinquency for credit cards by age also tells the same story. Credit card delinquency rates are up and, and uh, coming back to their pre-pandemic highs. And it's the same story here. Younger people are more adversely impacted by those decisions that they made to take on credit card debt than older generations. So in general, younger people are struggling here. And I think in part, it's because those financial institutions, both for auto loans and credit cards, made riskier credit decisions, riskier funding decisions during the pandemic. They were just approving more and more of these uh, uh, credit requests. Well, and and part of it, part of it is banks just love to suck you into credit, and and they want to teach you that mentality at a very young age. So 18, 19 college kids, uh, you know, can get credit cards today. Well, based on what they, it's not like they have an income. So it, part of this is, is institutionalized. And what I mean by that is the lenders, the banks out there have, have thought about this and decided that it makes sense to hook these kids when they're young, get them used to utilizing credit cards and credit for everything before they understand the absolute implications of what it is that they're doing. And it's worth mentioning that even as the Federal Reserve has made the decision to decrease the federal funds rate, we don't anticipate this like huge shock and awe decline in interest rates for new and used cars. Maybe a little bit more on new. Go watch our other video with a market update on that. Used car interest rates are still going to stay high, Dad. And so that means for a lot of these people that are in a situation where, you know, they, they, they're trying to afford to buy a new car, they're trying to make their payment, they're going to continue to like just stay in delinquency. They might say, okay, you know what? Maybe I could refinance my auto loan and get a better payment. You can, but it's not going to take, you know, $100 a month off your payment because the Fed funds rate went down 50 basis points. It might take $5 off your payment. So it's, you know, the, 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 um, the exit switch here or like the, the escape hatch, it's not really there. The, the off ramp that you're speaking of, well, that's an off ramp to the rest of the road that hasn't been built yet. And the reason I say that is if you're 60, 90 days delinquent on your current car loan and they're thinking about possibly repossessing that vehicle, well, there isn't a bank in the world that's going to say, yeah, let's finance this person. They've already proven they can't afford the vehicle. So there is no real exit strategy there other than figure out how to make payments or partial payments, speak to the, your lender and see if they'll work with you in some way. Otherwise, if the vehicle gets repossessed or you give it back voluntarily, you are setting yourself up for credit failure in the future. The price you're going to pay for that decision will be astronomical for the rest of your life. If we can help you out with anything, please subscribe to the channel here and we'll try and do our best or go check out caredge.com or even the caredge.com slash community, our forum. See if you can get some help. Pops, thank you as always for your time. My pleasure. Thank you.